Well, let's get into the big news uh, from <clears throat> Tokyo Game Show. Near Replicant version 1.2247448 Not a strange Japanese title or anything. <laughs> I love the. All right, so this is not new news, but it gave there was a huge update about it, which gave us yeah. so much more information. And I'm I'm kind of disappointed that you said the number because I prepared myself to say it really quickly, but that's fine. <laughs> um, but that that name, um, so I looked it up. Apparently, is the square root of one point five. Yeah, which is so Japanese. I love you know, that because it's, it's a, a what that's essentially what this game is. It's near one point five. And yeah, I know. It's if so you, Japanese. <laughs> oh, but it's so it's so near though, because a near is uh, like this is like forget about like Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that, which obviously does its weird naming conventions. Near this is kind of near is it makes sense in the weird but kind of like earnest world of Nia like it's Mm. it's it's kind of 100% fits um so they announced uh that um Nia Replicant version 1.22474487139 thank you is confirmed (laughs) for uh western release which is great which we'd assumed it would have been uh but it's on PS4 Xbox One and PC and it's coming out in April next year April 23rd so that's strange. Like no next gen. Um, it's just well, all yeah. current gen. Uh, which that's kind it, of like happening all the time, right? Where some of these games have slipped, or yeah, I guess they just always were going to be on old gen. Well, I also think it's because the game isn't getting such a huge overhaul that would probably justify being on next gen. People might go, "Well, this doesn't look like a next gen game because it's yeah. kind of all right." So I guess to explain what what is happening here, so they. It's the game is based on uh, so the first Nier game had two versions so a version in Japan that was called Nier Replicant and a version outside Japan called Inter- uh, Gestalt which was the international version basically yeah um, this is an upgraded version of Replicant so the J- Japan version which means that instead of playing as um, a father trying to um, look after and save his daughter from this plague um, you're playing as the brother. And, you'll, and you have to save your sister from the plague. So the only real differences between the two versions was the fact that one version you play as a father and one, the other version you play as a brother. Ugh, okay. And a lot of people that now love the original Nier, and I, I, to, I got into that game quite early, probably picked it up about four months after release. That game got crapped on by media and people when it, when it was up to release. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah, being definitely. like... Low scores. Uh... Low scores, but like leading up to it because the game looked a bit rough. And it's like, I remember, like, I used to go on Destructoid quite a bit. They'd be like laughing at the game. And it turns out the game is actually, in my opinion, great. And those people got it 100% wrong. And I think a lot of people have a connection to the the father figure, um, the near, the father near character, I guess. Um, and it's yeah, it's kind of a shame, but I guess it's a new experience because I've played through both uh, the original Nia um, in the. So actually, I'll say sorry. You know, I said a replicant would came out in Japan. The 360 version in Japan was also Gestalt. Oh, so oh, I because I played through the English and the Japanese versions of the game on 360, and they were both with <laughs> the course. father, the father character, right? So I need oh. to clarify that Japan 360 was that. But, yeah, yeah. So I guess it's only the PS3 version that was. But this, yeah, it's essentially it's an upgraded version. So it's not really technically a remaster. It's definitely not a remake, but it's definitely got a graphical overhaul. But it's essentially actually going to have new content. The lore of these games is already insane, and apparently it's going to add to that, which is really cool. Um, new music is being composed, and... The, the music in Nier and Nier Automata is is just phenomenal. It's probably some of the best game music I've ever heard in my life. It is amazing. And the fact that they're composing new music for that and apparently some new voice acting as well. So I'm I'm super excited. I'm definitely going to pick this up um, day one when it comes out. Um, you know, I think for a lot of people expecting this game to play like Nier Automata, it's, it's not going to. The, it looks like they've upgraded the combat and made it smoother, definitely. And I, I believe I read that uh, Platinum may be consulting on the game, but they're not behind it this time. Um, yeah, and that makes a massive difference, right? Like, 
like essentially platinum. It's a very platinum game, and I, I should just call out. I haven't played Nier, but I played a bit of Nier Automata, and I really, really love that game. Like, I like that's the kind of game that I wish you know I was a single <laughs> so that I could really get through it. Because that's a real interesting game. <laughs> like, it was a very odd game. I started playing it, and then the credits started rolling. I was like, what? <laughs> like, what is going on here? And like, like that, that's a cool game. You have no idea where that game goes, and the first Nier was like that as well. Um, a lot of people credit. They're like, oh, Nier Automata. Oh, look at this. That's crazy. It mixes genres. Like, the first Nier does, does this as well. Like, there's a whole section that plays like Resident Evil with fixed camera angles, you know? There's a text adventure in the game you know it's <laughs> it's it's crazy and the the problem a lot of people had with with me was it was it was very clunky it looked it honestly looked very rough um and my hope is that you know if they smooth the combat down a bit um and the fact that people are coming from you know having played automata i yeah. i think i think people are going to find this is you know they're gonna they're, they're going to experience what we did when we played this game you know and it's. I'm really excited about it. Um, but one thing is interesting. So you found a bit of a tidbit about the history of yeah, Nier, which I just blows my mind. Well, it kind of ties together, you know, my recent Dynasty Warriors inspired fascination. <laughs> yeah, it's just looking at the guys who produced it, uh, Shiba and Awaki, uh, uh, Awasaki, that uh, they actually conceived the game as a hybrid between Dynasty Warriors. And the very famous uh, Namco uh, combat game, Ace Combat. I was just like, well, what? <laughs> I was like, and as I said, I haven't played Nier. I've only played Nier Automata. And I'm, I kind of kind of get it to, to a degree. But I don't know. I haven't played enough of Automata either. But well, if you think about the way Automata opens, it's like, well, yeah, it's kind of got like that inspiration no, to it. No, but you're saying they can see the first Nier. The first Nier doesn't have yeah, any, yes. any kind of air combat. Yeah. Oh, really? And you know, but that happens a lot, right? That happens a lot from a, I have a creative vision of how I want a game to be. And then you can only make something. And then, you know, if it kind of gets that second wind, you can make what you really want in the sequel. I don't think that's what they're taking from Ace Combat. What what they're likely taking from Ace Combat is Ace yeah. Combat has a huge, crazy law in the oh, series. Oh, okay. There's a whole thing called know. like, stra- I think it's like called the Strange Real Universe or something. So I think that it's probably more a law um, inspiration from Ace Combat um, because there is, there's bullet hell style stuff in Nier, but it's more like incorporated in the actual... Um, you may have seen it in Nier Automata, like the way that the bullet enemy's bullets when you're fighting on the ground come towards you are almost like bullet hell style bullets. That started in Nier and they brought it across Nier Automata. But mm. Ace Combat's not a bullet hell shooter, so that doesn't make sense either. But the thing that it made me go, what the hell, is Dynasty Warriors because I will admit that I haven't played many of the Dynasty Warriors after uh, games after the f- number two, like the most popular one that started this whole thing. And yeah. it's like, I can't see that game at all in Nier. Like, I just can't see it. Like, the combat is... The combat in Nier, like, you may face maybe 10 enemies at most at once in some parts, but I'm like, I guess, you know, but they still say, well, they that's what they envisioned it, but, you know, obviously it ended up being something different. But it was just such a weird thing when I read it. I'm like, what? <laughs> so strange. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was really odd as well. I just saw the late-breaking news that they haven't fully lifted the restrictions in Victoria. Woo-hoo! But now they've introduced five thousand dollar fines. Continue! <laughs> they've introduced five thousand dollar fines now. Oh man. One last it's thing like, it's becoming a police state <laughs> down there. <laughs> One last thing that I want to mention about Nia is they also yeah. did um, announce or go into more detail on another Nia title called Near Reincarnation. Mm. But unfortunately if I'm like reading it, I'm like, oh that's cool. Oh, it's mobile. Mm, okay. It's a gacha game. Close the window. <laughs> uh. As soon as I read it's gacha, I'm like, oh my. Because I even tried, because Yoko Taro worked on, um, I think it's called Sino Alice or Sin Zero Alice or something, which yeah. is a recent uh, gacha game as well that I actually tried. I gave it a shot. And I just, I those, those style of games, I just do not click with me. I just feel disgusting playing them almost. It feels like that's the, feel, the same feeling I got with Mario Kart uh, Tour or whatever yeah. the mobile game. Yeah, Mario so, Kart Tour. As soon as you start talking about this whole gacha thing, it just pushes me away. So that's yeah, unfortunate. I was the same. I was the same with that. And I tried 
Fire Emblem uh, Heroes, I think it's called. And that yeah. that's just really heavy gacha mechanics and... I don't, it's really actually spoiled mobile gaming in general for me, just how filthy that whole industry is. I know. I just, I, like, I, I, I think I said on the podcast and the sort of ultimate review of it, like, the Apple Arcade, I signed up to it, played a bunch of the games, but it's just, like I said, it's, you know, this is going to be a terrible analogy, but to me, it's a bit like, you know, going into the adult, uh, not, not that these exist anymore, but in the old days, I guess, in like an adult store that sells DVDs and things like that, and then buying Schindler's List from there. It's like, <laughs> I can do it. Like, there's good content in there, but I have to wade through filth to get in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just really turned me off mobile gaming in general. And I actually got rid of my subscription because I was just like, ugh. Like, I don't know. These games are really genuinely good. And I'm just like, you know what? I'll just wait until they come out on the Switch or Steam and get them there because they're just, you know... Not that interesting. But yeah, like just, you know, my final thoughts just on the Nier Replicant. Uh, uh, have they actually, it's kind of a bit of a mix between a remaster and a remake, I guess, really, given that it's the 1.5 square uh, moniker. Yeah, but remember, remaster, remake is obviously not a, not a new term, but remaster is a relatively new term for, for the video game world. A yeah. lot of the time, there's, you know, the games have a history of coming out with an, expa- an extend, ex- or, sorry, expanded version of the game, like a 1.5. And I, yeah. that's the way I think you should feel about this game. It's a 1.5, but they have um, made it prettier, basically. But have they modernized anything? I mean, it doesn't seem very clear, I guess. Uh, so the combat has definitely looked smoother in the yeah. gameplay that they've shown. Yeah. Well, look, it's not a straight port, right? Like, so they've oh, definitely put a not. lot of stuff no, around it. No. I'm actually really interested in getting it, honestly, because just even from the little bit of near Automata that I've played, I'm just like, oh, uh, you know, and it, given that there is some level of continuation between these games, I'm actually almost now keen to get Replicant and play that through and then play Automata. So I'll see how it lands. I'll probably, honestly, I'll probably see what you think of it. And if you like it, I'll probably pick it up down the line. Look, it would take a lot for me not to like this game. Like, they will oh, okay. have to, like, <laughs> I'm telling you now, like, I give it a 98% chance of me loving this game, and that 2% okay. is if they screw stuff up. Yeah. Or I'll probably put it on this to-do list then. But, um, yeah, no, uh, really cool. It was really, pr- definitely the highlight for Tokyo Game Show for me. Like, when this came out, I was like, oh, that's, that's really sweet. Well, let's get into the next uh, segment. <laughs> 